Hi, my name is Rebecca Reif, and I'm really glad that you're joining me today. Today, I want to share out of Nahum. It's the fierce side of God, the wrath side of God, and also the kind side of God. And you'll see it in how he's being towards his people and how he's being towards the people that are coming against his people. And you know, when people come against us, God takes that personal. That is very personal to him. There are times when he will use the very people that are against us to discipline us. But once he's done with that, God will never leave the guilty unpunished, especially if they take it too far. God will never leave the guilty unpunished. That's why we ourselves go through discipline. We're, nobody gets away with anything. God will not be mocked. Whatever a man sow, he shall reap. And so to understand that and grasp that is to really get an idea of the balance in the spiritual realm. And to understand that God is, you cannot fit him in a box. And the Bible states very clearly that he's both kind and severe, that he's love and wrath. God is love, but he's also wrath. And that wrath is so fierce and so, that really when God says that we should fear him, that's really what he's talking about. He's got another side to him. You know, we all will say, like, I got another side to me. Where do we think we get that? We get it from our creator. We're all parts of him. Different measures of himself that he's poured into us and created us to be. And so then he gives us a free will. So we all have the potential to go one way or the other. And in our own free will, we choose which way to go. And so God never sets us up. He puts a measure of everything in us, but we all have the potential to go one way or the other. And it's our choice. When we come up to every situation in life and we're faced with some obstacle or circumstance or opportunity or we're faced with the choice between life and death that's when we choose and the more we choose the more we go on in life that's who we're becoming so it's a matter of choices truly and and what choices we have the coolest part is that we can always change that there's always the potential to change our choices. And so if we've chosen to go down the wrong road for a long time and, and that's where we're at, we can come to a place where we stop in life and say, this is not the path I want for myself. I have the ability to change. I can change and so can my circumstances. It's a matter of making different choices and, and begin to choose. So. But I want us to all understand the reason why God says not to take revenge is because he will take it for us. And God's lessons are life lessons. They're life altering. We never forget them. Like they change us and we truly grow from them. And so better to leave it up to God to deal with the people that have come against us than to try and muddle it up with our own pathetic anger. Let God deal with it because he's going to do it in righteousness, in justice and love, but he's going to do it and, and make no mistake about that. So allow him that. And you know, there's two kinds of grief in this world. There's worldly grief, which means we can just get caught up in our own grief and not let it go. And, and not allow ourselves to let it go or move on from it. And then there's a, a righteous grief, a godly grief, 
that leads us to repentance and deliverance. If we stay stuck in a worldly grief and we refuse to let it go or allow it to help us grow, then it's deadly and ends in death. It, it literally can be the kind of grief that kills you. But a righteous, godly grief will re produce a, a repentance and deliverance out of situations and, and circumstances and life lessons. It can, it can grow us. And so it's, um, which way do we want to go? So even when we come up against grief, deep, devastating grief in life, there's choices to make of whether we want God to be involved in that and allow it to grow us up and lead us to a place of repentance and deliverance. And, and, and even if there's no repentance necessary, it still can deliver us. It can be a grief that delivers us from uh, one level of growth to another and, and we can grow in it. And so even in grief, there's choices to be made, but all in life has choices to be made and we can grow and learn and uh, progress in those choices. But if someone's oppressing us, if we have um, Assyrians or Ninevites, uh, which were very cruel to the Israelite people, they were very, I mean, they were vicious and cruel to the Israelite people and oppressed them. Um, Pharaoh oppressed them and took them into captivity and enslaved them. You know, uh, Babylon did too. Uh, they were captured and taken as slaves. And so uh, any kind of uh, people that bring fear or anxiety on purpose, uh, you know, captivity that those that try and stumble our steps or those that try and rule over us or those that try and um, take charge of our life or, or oppress us in some way or come against us in some way. And there's different levels. You know, we all know people that do stuff like that. And so um, God takes that personal. You know, people that come against us, it's not something that he just doesn't see. He sees it, you know, People may think that he doesn't see it, but he sees it and, and he takes it personal and he will fight on our behalf for us. He will go to battle for us. And, and so our job is to cast our care on him and, and believe that he's going to fight that battle and he's going to make things right and, and he's going to have justice for us. And so I'm going to read out of Nahum. It's a really extreme version um, of God's, you know, defending his people. So, but it's, it gives us a sense of, you know, when God says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom, it gives us a sense of why. Here's some reasons why to fear the Lord. God's wrath is frightening. It's, uh, frightening. And so, and his love, nothing else is like it. There's nothing on the face of this earth that's anything like the love of God. N nothing can top it at all. So, the message concerning the message concerning Nineveh came as a vision to Nahum, who lived in Elkosh. The Lord is jealous, God, filled with vengeance and rage. He takes revenge on all who oppose him and continues to rage against his enemies. The Lord is slow to get angry, but his power is great. He never lets the guilty go unpunished. He displays his power in the whirlwind and the storm. The billowing clouds are the dust beneath his feet. At his commands, the oceans dry up and the rivers disappear. The lush pastures of Bashan and camel fade, and the green forests of Lebanon wither. 
In his presence the mountains quake and the hills melt away. The earth trembles and its people are destroyed. Who can stand before his fierce anger? Who can survive his burning fury? His rage blazes forth like a fire and the mountains crumble to dust in his presence. The Lord is good, a strong refuge when tr trouble comes. He is close to those who trust in him, but he will sweep away his enemies in an overwhelming flood. He will pursue his foes into the darkness of night. Why are you scheming against the Lord? He will destroy you with one blow. He won't need to strike twice. His enemies tangled like thorn bushes and staggering like drunks will be burned up like dry stubble in a field. Who is this wicked counselor of yours who plots evil against the Lord? This is what the Lord says. Though the Assyrians have many allies, they will be destroyed and disappear. O oh, my people, I have punished you before, but I will not punish you again. Now I will break off the yoke of bondage from your neck and tear off the chains of the Assyrian oppressor. And this is what the Lord says concerning the Assyrians in Nineveh. You will have no children to carry on your name. I will destroy all the idols of your temples of your gods. I am preparing a grave for you because you are despicable. Look, a messenger is coming from the mountains with good news. He is bringing a message of peace. Celebrate your festivals, O people of Judah, and fulfill all your vows, for the wicked enemies will never invade your land again. They will com be completely destroyed. So the good news is to his people. The news of peace. The coming of, of God to remove the enemies and the people who have been terrorizing them and oppressing them. You know, the Ninevites, Assyrians would come and just plunder and rob and rape and plumage and uh, just come against them in such a horrible way. And, uh, and it was nothing nice. And so they are to rejoice and celebrate because it's the coming of good news. That's some pretty good news that the people who've been, you know, terrorizing you are, are about to be dealt with and, and God is going to deal with them. But it's also frightening news if you're on the receiving end and you're a, a Ninevite, um, probably a good idea to try and Make good with the Lord, <laughs> you know, before he deals with you. You know, Nineveh had heard the message from Jonah. And that time, they uh, they listened to Jonah and they repented and God did not come against them. But when it came to the second go around, they didn't listen. And God did exactly what he said he was going to do. And, and he wiped them out. He destroyed them. And so it's important for us when we are going down the wrong road and we are doing things to other people that we should not be doing um, to put that in check and to repent and turn our feet away from evil and no longer go down that road. But if we're on the receiving end of people who are coming against us and treating us like that, know this. God is for us, not against us. God defends his people. God does not leave the guilty unpunished. God takes it personal when people come against his. And God will deal with it. Vengeance is the Lord's, not ours to take. And God's vengeance is done with justice. It's perfect. It's just. It's righteous. It's holy. And, and it is with love. Sorry about that. And it's with love. So we can trust the Lord with all our problems. We can cast our cares upon the Lord. If we have situations 
and people that are bringing a lot of anxiety into our life and bringing a lot of um, fear into our life or we have situations and people in our life that are oppressing us and, and even we feel captive to things or even the enemy himself you know God takes that personal God loves us and and he will defend us and he will be there for us he's a stronghold for those who trust in him he's a good God and even in his righteous anger he has a purpose for it he would much rather that we repent and turn our feet from evil he would much rather have that than have to deal with us God requires obedience rather than sacrifice he would rather that we become obedient to him and his word and follow after him and so it's just a a, a wise decision for all of us to live our lives according to the word and live godly lives uh, good lives and and follow Christ and um, and know that he's good and he's on our side and he's for us he's not against us and he cares about us and he wants to defend us and be there for us so this is the coming good news the news of peace for those who've been oppressed God will set you free from that and he is on your side and he will fight your battle for you just cast your care upon him and trust him to do so and he will do it so with that, I hope that you're blessed. I hope you got something out of that. I'm reading today out of Nahum. I'm reading from chapter 1, verse 1, all the way down to verse, let's see. Again, I need to put my readers on. All the way down to verse 15. So... Verses 1 through 15, chapter 1, Nahum. I hope you got something out of that word. I hope that you're very blessed today. I love you all. I'll see you again next time. All right. Bye-bye.